What's up guys, today I have a much requested video for you. As you can probably tell from the title, today we're going to be extending our Emacs 29 config to handle Python packages, or really to set up a Python development environment in Emacs. On the screen right now, you probably see a lot of Rust stuff. This is what we had in our config from last time I made a video like this. And the idea today is basically going to be uh, I guess I'll say copy and paste this config and replace uh, all the Rust mentions with Python. So the first thing we're going to do is actually incorporate a suggestion made by a viewer. Um, someone sent me an email and said that we don't actually have to do this add to list auto mode a list. We can actually use the dot mode. Whoops, I forgot I don't have evil mode. We can actually use the mode section of use package. And it looks a lot like what we have up here this and we'll just say rust ts mode and then we can get rid of this entirely great now the reason I wanted to do that first is because we're going to use that for Python mode at least potentially now just to t test out what we get out of the box with Emacs let's go ahead and open up a try.py file and so you see we are actually in Python mode which I usually check like this. Um, I hit uh, meta shift colon, and you can just type major mode. And you see we're in Python mode. Now I would actually like to use Python TS mode, but again, it's telling us that the language grammar is not installed. So we can do um, tree sit install language grammar, and we'll just say Python. There's no recipe. Yes, we'll build it interactively. It knows the Git repository. We'll take the default branch, default parser, default compiler, <laughs> default C++ compiler, and there we go. We should now be able to activate Python TS mode, which we can double check with major mode. Great, we have now installed that. If we hop back to init el, let's start configuring Python TS mode. So use package Python TS mode. I think I accidentally accepted a completion there. Ensure T. And let's add some hooks. So just like we did for Rust, we're also going to want to turn on eglot. So Python TS mode, eglot ensure. And we're actually going to do something slightly different for company mode. I'll show you in a second. And then we'll do the same thing with mode. If we get .py, then we want to activate Python TS mode instead of Python mode. And I think that should be it for now. We'll leave it down here uh, just so we know, just so we have room for later. We'll probably have to add some config. Now that we've got Python TS mode set up, I do want to show you guys a couple of quick tricks for company mode itself. Now, personally, I like to set the company idle delay a bit uh, lower so that it, it starts offering me completions right away. So to do that, you can set company idle delay. Uh, I set mine to 0 0.1, which is pretty short. And then I also like to set company minimum prefix length to one. That way, as soon as I type anything, it will start um, suggesting completion. So you'll see much faster use package. Yeah, so now company is running a lot faster or showing up a lot faster. All right, let's try to revisit our try.py couldn't revert the buffer okay as you can see down at the bottom the eglot eglot actually failed to activate because it we don't have an lsp installed so we can hop over to our terminal and i'll go ahead and uh, become the super user and if we just search for um, pi lsp we'll actually see a bunch of options the first one we want is this one right here python 3 pi lsp but you can install these other plugins as well I think iSort's quite nice. Um, PyLSP Black will be helpful. So let's go ahead and install several of these actually. So apt install Python 3, PyLSP, Python 3, PyLSP. I like iSort and I also like Black. So we'll do Python 3, PyLSP, Black. We'll go ahead and collect all three of those. And then we're going to try to reopen our. Um, revert our Python buffer again. <clears throat> there we go. Reverted buffer. And now PyLSP is running. 
So let's just give this a try. Let's try import. Ah, this is the part I forgot. We do actually also want to start company mode. I would really like to start company mode when Eaglet starts, but I don't exactly know how to do that. <laughs> I haven't looked it up yet. So we'll just stick with it like this. Python TS mode. We will go ahead and do um, company mode. And let's kill that for now. Hop back to try.py. Yeah, let's go ahead and discard that. And let's try import JSON. And then let's import something else. Import maybe sys. And then we can import um, what's something else to import? How about multi-processing? There we go. Now, if I run eagle at format buffer, there we go. Okay, so it did actually run the formatting command. So that's great. Um, what else should we do? We can try defining a class. Um, example uh, dev. Whoops. Um, print hello world and let's print that to standard error so let's see file ah uh, yes standard error there we go and let's give that a quick run compile python 3 try.py and we'll see, of course, it didn't do anything because I didn't do if name equals main, like a good Python programmer. Let's build an example. Hello world. Great. So there you go. That's a pretty simple Python setup. Now, there are actually a couple of other packages that I really like to use with Python mode. The first one of these is the conda package. So this is really helpful if you're using Anaconda to manage your virtual environments. So I will go ahead and just pop this down here. Now, to install these packages, I think you are going to have to add the Melpo repository. So this may not be um, something you wanna do for a really minimal config, but I wanted to throw this here because it is helpful for Python. So what this would look like is use package conda, ensure T, and then, in my config at least, I have config, and then you can set your conda env home directory. So in my case, on my actual desktop, what I have for this is expand file name, and it's in my home area, and it's just called Mamba Forge. So that's the setup I use for managing my conda environments for work. We can actually, let's try to move in, uh, yeah, okay, we try to evaluate it. We cannot load Conda because it's actually installed from Melpa. So I would suggest doing that. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So there's Melpa. Another package I like uh, for Python specifically is actually this highlight indent guides mode. <laughs> so I'll show you what that looks like as well. For that, I just do use package highlight indent guides. I do ensure T. And then I add a hook on that so that it starts in Python mode. So in this case, we can say Python TS mode, highlight indent guides mode. And then I do set this one configuration option, which is highlight indent guides method. And I set it to character. And let's see if that's an ELPA. Okay, that one is also not an ELPA. So because I've recommended both of these, let's throw a comment here. Require Melpa. And I'll show you guys how to add Melpa as a repository if you would like. The way you do that, add to list, package archives. I'm still not used to the default uh, company key bindings, package archives. And then we'll just give it a little list, Melpa http melpa.org slash packages. 
and because we love encryption let's go ahead and give it a try we'll try using HTTPS I feel like I've had problems with that before but we'll give it a shot let's try to install conda mode what's up guys this is Brent from the future jumping in here just to clarify something the source of that error was the fact that my mom before its directory did not actually exist so I went ahead and actually installed Mamba inside of this VM and once that was installed there were no problems with running this use package uh, configuration so I, I think that was actually originating from expand file name as long as you pass something to expand file name that actually exists you shouldn't have any problems with that configuration I also forgot to show you how to actually activate a conda environment from within Emacs but it's pretty straightforward you just type meta x conda env then you'll see some actions down here the one I usually go for is conda env activate if you hit tab you'll also see um, the base environment and I created created an environment as an example just called not base if you select one of these you'll go ahead and switch into that conda environment and then everything you run in Emacs notably your compilation buffers will be inside of that new environment when you're done with that you can also do conda env deactivate just to get out of it if you want to now back to the rest of the video and then let's try this one okay that one actually looks okay if I revert the buffer again it it says it's it's there but I don't see it actually can see it <laughs> it uh, it might be a problem with the theme and I'm back from the future again just to show you how you can actually update these colors so this is actually in the highlight indent guides mode documentation but you can do set face foreground highlight indent guides character face and actually they suggest dim gray but for the sake of example let's just do a white one and if I hop back now to try.py you'll be able to see very clearly the indentation guides and again back to the video so this can be really helpful since Python just uses indentation it can be nice to get lines to show you where everything is now I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show today the the only other thing um, is just to show off really quickly this bind keyword and use package so one thing I like to bind in a lot of different modes a lot of programming modes is f5 to recompile so we do map Python TS mode mode oh it's alt that's what it is meta in map and I want to bind f5 to recompile so let's go back to Python and if I hit F5 you'll see that it's now recompiling now another the other thing I like to do is much like that is I also like to bind F6 to eglot format And now the reason I deleted that line is if I hit F6, you'll see that it now formats the buffer for me. And I think it should also reorganize my imports because we added that plugin for PyLSP. So there you have it. This is a nice minimal setup for Python TS mode. Using Python TS mode, um, it's basically built into Emacs 29. We've also got company mode from Elpa. And then if you want some additional niceties like this conda package and highlight indent guides you can just add melpa as one of your repositories and install these two one other thing i forgot to mention is that you can also install python 3 flake 8 which is a nice linter for python and as soon as you have this installed and you reload eglot you'll get nice little hints like this so you'll see actually in the hover PyFlakes is telling me that JSON is imported but not used. 
and the same thing with multiprocessing. This also allows you to run the command fly make um, show diagnostics, show buffer diagnostics, and you can get something nice like this that you can click on and it'll take you to the lines that are causing trouble. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know down below if there are any other modes that you uh, want me to take a look at, or if there are any additions that you need um, to, to make your programming easier. These are, these are pretty minimal setups, and I will probably have some additional suggestions to add to them once I incorporate eglot into my own workflow. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I know I already let the outro play, but after recording the video, I thought of a few extra tips that don't really justify a video on their own. The first one is this desktop save mode here, which lets you remember the state of Emacs between launches. This is really nice, for example, if you would like to make sure that your config works when you start Emacs fresh. So I can do restart Emacs, and once desktop save mode is enabled, it will pick up right where I left off. That's really convenient. I use that all the time. The other thing I wanted to add in is actually some configuration for eGlot itself. Now, eGlot can do a lot of things. Oh, not like that. And to take advantage of some of that, it'd be really nice to actually have some binding set up. So the first binding I want to set up, and all of these are going to be in eGlot mode map. So I'm gonna to have to add colon map. The, the first one is just LDoc. So this is gonna let you open documentation for something at point. So I usually bind that to control C D and we'll just say L doc. The next thing I like to bind are code actions. So I put that on A for actions and this will be eglot code. I think it's code actions. We'll test it out. And the last thing I like to do is control C R Oops, forgot the quotes for eglot rename. This is really nice for renaming a variable or a function or something like that across a whole project. So let's evaluate that. Hop back to try.py. And let's try to rename our example class. So first of all, control C R, rename example to, um, we'll just rename it to something else. Great. The other thing we can do is try to look at some documentation with Control C, whoops, <laughs> Control C, D, and you'll see that we're getting the full documentation over here in an LDoc buffer. So this is really handy. And just to show you real quick, if we were to define our own function and add a documentation comment, this is a doc comment, first one zero. If I went down here and I wanted to call our own function, let's just call fun. I can do control CD on that as well and see our own documentation. So LDoc is really handy and hopefully you can see why it's nice having a binding for this. The other thing I'm not so, <laughs> I'm not so sure how to do this, uh, show this off in uh, Python. Yeah, cause we've got no code actions here, uh, no code actions here, but code actions are really useful, especially in a, a rust mode buffer. So I know in Rust, you can, for example, do things like extract functions or extract a variable or extract a constant, or you can add and import things like that. So I hope you will find some use from all three of these key bindings and get the most out of eGlot. So again, thanks for watching. See you next time.